After seven seasons and a premiership, Paul Green is gone from the North Queensland Cowboys, which means it could well open up the NRL coaching merry-go-round. There's plenty for our panel to discuss, so let's dive straight into today's show. Where will the Cowboys go to next? And could Green make a quick return to the coaching ranks? They haven't been there since 2003, but the Panthers are back on top of the table and Josh Mansour makes a special visit. As pressure mounts at Red Hill, was Anthony Seabold given an ultimatum? And what does he have to do to save his job? And as we pass the halfway mark of the season, we revisit our pre-season predictions. Well, it's great to have your company. I'm Katie Brown, and I'm joined by two of my favourite footy friends, Jamie <laughs> Sow and Michael Chalmers. How was that for an intro? Very, you very good. That, did you didn't expect that, It's very nice of you. Very nice. <laughs> hey, what did you both fancy at around 10? That's how we like to start the show. Michael, I'll go with you. I fancied a little bit of man love at the, up at the Knights. Yeah, Caelan Ponga, little kiss on Mitchell Pearce there. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind it. It brings me back to Scotty Prince and Benji Marshall all those years ago. Dell kissed me once oh. at West Tigers. Uh, I'd never wash that cheek again. <laughs> but um, I actually fancied all the fresh haircuts getting around, Katie. Every week it seems like the players, I don't know if they're getting cut game day or not, but they're, they, they're, they're fresh cuts every single week. The, the dyed hair, everything's fresh. Well, under the bubble, that's the only thing they're allowed to go and do, so they're just getting haircuts every second day. How, ah. many, how, how often do you get your hair cut? Uh, twice, a, uh, twice a month. So every two weeks, yeah. yeah well, I'll go to a, a far right. Yeah. Once a week at the moment. No, once every eight days. He's big oh, time. Oh, every eight days. Oh, He's big sorry. time. The greys start to come out. <laughs> straight to the barber. <laughs> All right, and just quickly, before we do get into the footy news, uh, a thank you to our local and our international audience who have been tuning in. Uh, last week, we did see in our Facebook comments, we had fans from Fiji, uh, Vancouver, the UK, the Philippines even. So keep it coming. We love you all tuning in. So make sure every Monday at 5 p.m., but it is to the big news, and of course, Paul Green and the Cow North Queensland Cowboys have parted ways. Credit to Paul Green, who did front media today. We felt um, that it was probably best for everyone and it allowed everyone some clear air if I uh, finish up immediately. I think um, that will take the distraction about my position away and allow the, the players and staff to get on with uh, the rest of this year and, and also planning for next year and beyond. Whilst my time coaching the, the Cowboys has come to an end, um, my time as a head coach has not, so I'll be looking for an opportunity at some stage. Yeah, and a quick look at his time with the club, a premiership there in 2015 and backing it up to be grand finalist in 2017. But two pretty disappointing finishes there, gents. Uh, Green and the club did decide to part ways on Thursday, actually. Uh, but are you surprised, Michael, that they didn't... that he wanted to coach one more game? I'm more surprised that it didn't get out when they found out last week, like when they made the decision. And nothing stays secret in rugby league for very long. Very long, it lasted the weekend. Look, I think there's, there's no shame in... I, I, I don't think there's many coaches who can coach at a club for a long period of time. Wayne Bennett, Craig Bellamy, maybe Trent Robertson, but I don't think there's a shame in the window closing. And some coaches just run their course at clubs. And I think Paul Green had that three or four year window where the Cowboys are one of the benchmark teams in the competition and it's over. And I, I think the club and Paul Green recognise that and the right decision's been made. If they had uh, put more of a fight up against Penrith and potentially won, do you think that they would have second guessed uh, leaving? No, no, the decision was made. I think, to be fair, I, I think the decision could have been made at the end of last year as well. They gave him one last chance. They said, look, you've got Valentine Holmes coming. You've got the roster you want, a few changes. They could have easily got rid of him last year. They've had two disappointing years. This is their third. So I, I think the timing as well. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Paul Green is actually a little bit pleased with the timing because it means he can put his name out there for jobs. If he waits till the end of the year and they sack him at the end of the year, there could be got no jobs available. So this gives him the chance now to look around, gives the Cowboys a chance to get somebody for next year that they want. It worked out well for both parties. So who does take that role? What do you reckon, Jamie? I, I know there's talk around there. Jason Riles, Sean Wayne, Anthony Griffin. There's a few guys out there. What, what do you think the Cowboys need? Uh, I think they need an experienced coach. I think you're going up there, you've still got some young talent there coming through, but also some older guys that need a new coat of paint. So uh, an experienced coach, you spoke of Anthony Griffin, pretty good win rate in the NRL, uh, was able to turn Penrith around in, and make con uh, consecutive finals appearances. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes up there and you know maybe gets the first look in. You've got inexperienced coaches there, but I think this team needs it. Michael Morgan 
doesn't want to go through a rebuild. You've got $2 million players there, Val Holmes as well. They need to go up there and have success in a stadium that was built purposely for them straight away. Don't you think Anthony Griffin is somewhat similar to the way Paul Green coaches, though? Or are they, are they completely different? Because uh, I would suggest personality-wise that... Yeah, I don't think he goes off personality. I've worked with Hook and, you know, yes, he's very um, diligent and he's school teacherish in terms of how he gets his players ready, but the, the results are there, you know, yeah. the results were there. Uh, even though we parted ways in 2016, I enjoyed my time under Anthony Griffin. Yeah, you have, a, I guess, a clash of differences at times, but um, I think he'd be perfect S up there. Sally, what, what makes... Because when you left, it, uh, it's well known that you weren't happy with Anthony Griffin at the time. Do you think the Cowboys need to feel as uncomfortable as you felt back then? Like, in yeah. hindsight, you look back and probably you needed that, right? Or the, Pan the Panthers needed that. Do you think that the Cowboys will benefit from him coming in and shaking things up? Yeah, well, for me, finishing then was the best time, best move in my career because I was able to go into media and get on with life rather than have that slow transition. But, um, yeah, it was a shake-up. I had things going in my personal life that didn't coincide with the team. So um, it's interesting to see Paul Green. You know, back to him. If, if the Brisbane want an experienced coach to come in and help Anthony Seabold, you could possibly get Paul Green for the rest of the year to right. come in and help. The thing with Anthony Seabold, though, is he, is he paranoid to allow someone to come in? Because he's going to see anyone who comes in as, uh, as a threat to his job. Because the likelihood is, if they continue to perform the way they are, he will not be in a job next year. And if someone comes in and they start winning, well, it just all of a sudden looks like, OK, well, you know what? The guy who came in has fixed the problems. He can stay in the job. My last question is, does Paul Green jump to the front of the queue at other clubs or is he in the pack and, and will have to, well, he'll have to interview, but he's not going to be headhunted. Well, he's a premiership winning coach and I don't know if there are many premiership winning coaches sitting there ready to go. So I, I think Paul Green's a fantastic coach he, uh, and I do believe his time at the Cowboys had expired a couple of years back and they took too long to pull the trigger. It doesn't mean he can't have a positive impact somewhere else. But, I, I think he's the pick of the bunch, yeah. But now that era starts, the post-JT, post-Green, mm. they can actually get on with it now, the North Queensland Cowboys. OK, so we've sort of suggested who you think would be the right fit there. You say that Paul Green would be the front, front run runner. The Warriors and the Bulldogs are looking for coaches, but when we move to the Bulldogs, is Trent Barrett sealed? Yeah, that's done. It's Trent Barrett. It will be Trent Barrett. They're just finalising the contract at the moment. The Warriors one is the interesting one in terms of what they do and who they want because a few guys have pulled the pin on them. You know, Nathan Brown no longer interested there, so be interesting to see... Why? Why does that happen? Yeah. Well, Nathan, well I don't blame Nathan Brown. He's got a, a family. He's got three or four kids, so it's a big move for people. And that's, The Warriors want someone who's willing to come over and put the hard yards in. And if Brownie thinks that, you know what, that job isn't right for me, then so be it. Like, Nathan Brown has earned the right to pick and choose where he wants to coach. He's not a start-up coach. Yeah, it, there might be a better job. There's 16 jobs and there won't... I don't, you know, for me, I think the New Zealand Warriors job would be one of the most enticing jobs if you're trying to be a head coach because you have the chance to create history. Can you imagine the turnaround? If you go over there and they hired the coach now and said, you're not going to coach this year, you're going to come in and build the foundations about what you want next year, you're going to have recruitment, all that kind of stuff so you hit the ground running in November. If they made the eight next year, you could pretty much stay over there for as long as you like. Like, it would be absolutely amazing if someone went over there and helped that turn that culture and that country around with their rugby league and get them back on the map. I think it would be a very, very exciting opportunity. If I was a head coach, I'd be looking to try and get over there, get my hands dirty and get stuck into some of that unearthed talent over there. Coach or coaches, because Ben and Shane Walker were obviously tossed around. Are you gents for that for them as an opportunity? I am. I think the way the game's going and I, I want to see more expansive football. You want to see teams play with the ball. I think Ben and Shane Walker have... You know, had their chance to show what they can do. And it's an exciting brand of football which has been synonymous with the Warriors for many years. So I wouldn't mind if the Warriors give them a chance. I don't think they've got much to lose. They, they've tried to go down the discipline area. They've tried to have it, obviously have some systems around the players. It hasn't worked. Throw the ball around 12 months, give them a deal. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then you start again. But I, I don't mind the idea. Like no, nah, not for me. Um, and you you spoke about personal. opportunity. Yeah, it's opportunity, but that's the style that they're bringing in. Okay. It was it was successful with the Ipswich Jets in 2014. I don't know if that style would adapt to the NRL. The and game's it, opened up now, Sally. Do you I, think it'll? Suit I know, that? but and you're saying give them a go. What if it goes worse and they finish even worse next year? In and and everything's back to normal. They're playing home games and that. Well, and imagine going to Auckland or Mount Smart Stadium and not seeing a fan in the stadium because they haven't adapted to that style. Yeah, it's a unique style, and and I I enjoy watching. It, don't get me wrong, but I think they need someone in there maybe uh, uh, that sees the opportunity that can go over there and help rebuild 
rather than a new style that may not take to the players and it just goes south. Well, you talk about capturing the imagination of New Zealand. Like, imagine if they go and play their style of football and they're successful. Do they have the cattle they, to play that style? They get on the back of that. It'll be incredible for New they, Zealand. They don't have the cattle to play that style. Well, I, I think they've got some good young players there, but... They don't have the cattle to play the Walker they Brothers have got the style. Halves. They haven't got the halves. No. They don't have the They're going to lose Blake Green. No. Paddy Nicarima might do what they want to do. They just, just need someone. Just one else. second, please. They don't have the team <laughs> to play the Walker style. They would have to have five, six, what do they seven. Need? What's the Walker style need? They need a, a control. They need a controlling humper. Yes, yeah, Sean Johnson. They need a couple of other forwards that can offload the ball, that can actually bend the line back. They need a dominant nine that can control the ruck and be able to provide offloads and, and know when to take off from dummy half. Have they got that? That's six roster changes, mate. You can't just get rid of six players and bring in... And where's the quality come from that you recruit over there? It's going to take time to get them back on track. It's not a quick fix in New Zealand Warriors. See how he's put his hand up. He knows what's going on over there. <laughs> well, he's called it every other time this year. He's passionate about it. I'll give him that. He's passionate about the Warriors. Do you want to put your number out for the Warriors? I know to call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, another man who can't seem to escape the headlines is, of course, Anthony Seabold, uh, a seventh, another defeat, sorry, very un, un bronco like I would, I would suggest. Um, there has been reports that there's an ultimatum. Basically, Anthony Seabold needs to win five of the last ten matches. Gents, is this actually achievable? Can they win the five games? Five out of ten. No. I don't think they can win three out of ten, to be honest with you. I, I think they'll be lucky... They'll avoid the spoon, but just. I, I think that's their main objective this year, avoid the spoon. They'll avoid the spoon because the Bulldogs have got not as talented roster as that. There's a couple of games here they might find themselves in, but no, they won't. It's, you know, it's, um, I heard Phil Gould talk about it. You know, it's ridiculous that you put a, a thing... You're, he's either the coach or he's not the coach. You're either seeing something from there. It's not the Broncos losing. When a team loses, you know, the five bottom teams at the moment, when they lose... OK, there's different ways that you lose. The Cowboys had every right to turn up to Penrith yesterday and lose by 40 points. They had to get on the plane, sit around there, get the bus down, you know, every, every excuse. Yeah. They didn't turn it up. Broncos come down to Leichhardt and did not get off the plane. No, I, I agree with you. I said a few weeks ago, when the, few weeks ago, when the Bulldogs lose, they lose with dignity. You've got to yeah. give the Bulldogs credit, which is why I don't think the Bulldogs' job is actually too bad because... Trent Barrett is a is renowned attacking coach. They've got the defence and the resilience and the, the culture of that club to actually show some ticker. They just need to put some finishing touches on it, which I think Trent Barrett can do for them. Well, sticking at Red Hill and in Brisbane, Patrick Carrigan did speak to media today. Listen to his response. As T said, I'll just reiterate that we back Steve's, we back this club and we back the 17 players that, that get the opportunity to play. Um, no, it's inexcusable the last... Um, eight weeks, how we've been performing. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure on the club and, and, and the players for the last 10 rounds of the season, but um, you know we go out every week with the intention to win and to compete hard, and, and we missed the mark last week, so that's, that's where we'll be um, making the changes this week. Yeah, well, that was Patrick Carrigan. But after their loss to the Tigers, I was so concerned by how unconvincing Anthony Seabold was post-match. As I said, there's no excuses. We're out of excuses. I'm sick of talking about it, to be fair. I'll take one more question, guys. Are you doubting yourself the moment, I'm not feeling that great, really, I'll be honest. Um, you know, we put a lot of time in preparing the team each week. We put a lot of time in preparing the team for the season. And, um, you know, those performances are, are totally unacceptable. If you're a player and you see that, how are you feeling, Jamie? I was a player that over thought things after a loss and when we were struggling you know found myself over analyzing and thinking the worst of things um, it would be a lot of sleepless nights for a lot of those players especially the young guys that are still trying to uh, make their way and be consistent in the NRL it is there's a divide at the moment there's the coaches box and then there's a big gap and then there's the players that take the field every week there's the the attitude reflects the leadership up there and it's hard to watch because the Broncos are such a, a powerhouse club, but, yeah, it'd but be very hard. be very sleepless What's night. What's time got to do with anything? Like, I, we put a lot of time into preparing. Like, it's, the jo it's, the, it's his job. To, that's what he's got to do. Like, you can't refer to how much time you put into something. I'm not sitting around here saying, I prepare, I ring a lot of people. That's my job. Like, you've got to do that sort of thing. And uh, I think that the excuses have worn thin with a lot of people with Anthony Seabold. The question I ask all the time is if... If it wasn't a six-year deal and it wasn't the board and the CEO riding on this decision, would he have been sacked already? Yes, he would have. If you had swapped coaches on Thursday, on Friday night, 
for a week beforehand, do you think the Brisbane Broncos lose by 48 points to the West Tigers? Mm, no. No. I don't, <laughs> I don't think Brodie Croft and Milford are in the halves. <laughs> well, well that's, that's, that's the other thing. Yeah. They're making changes. We've well, heard. we'll see. Anthony Milford did train at fullback. I know the reporters were reporting that. And then Tom Dearden was at seven um, and Croft at six. But if we take a look at the team that played the West Tigers, the 17, here it is. Do you think that what they have there in the 17 is OK? And do they have enough, enough depth? I know you're, you're a Darius Boyd fan. Do you keep him in the centres or do you put him back to fullback? Because there's been a lot of talk about dropping players like Anthony Milford and Darius Boyd. I think Anthony Milford and Brodie Croft need a week away. Um, just to get some, a different voice in there. I know they've got a lot of players unavailable, but they've got some young guys there they can just let rip and tear and just go out there just with energy because the thing about me, I, I, I said a couple of weeks ago I'd have Darius Boyd at fullback mm -hmm. and this is for the reason that you get your halves, they're young halves, they're inexperienced in terms of playing together. I know Milford's played a lot of footy, he's played in grand final. You have an experienced prep, dual premiership winner who's played for Australia and Queensland who can just help put them in position. Now let's not worry about the result. You know, at the moment, there's too much focus on the result for the Brisbane Broncos. There's no thought about the process of how we get to that result. Darius Boyd can help you there. Yes, he's passed his best. Yes, he hasn't been playing great. But if you put him in a position of fullback and not a make-up position of centre, then he'll be able to help this team in his bet in his last ten games. So, we, with all due respect, there's one difference to the two teams. Anthony Seabold is not making the decisions he needs to because he's fearing for his job. He's thinking, I'm just going to play Milford one more week because he's going to come good. Whereas Michael Maguire, his job is safe. He's not, he's not making the decisions in fear of what's going to happen because he knows that the club is what he's looking after. Anthony Seabold's making decisions based on surviving. And we that's don't what need it looks to talk like. about um, um, Maguire. We need no. to talk about who's available and not available. And in that graphic, that's, that's no bigger than any other team who has injuries. Every season oh, there it's are teams pretty, who it's have a pretty, injuries. Um, it's a pretty hefty toll. Yeah, but have a look at Stephen Kearney. Yeah, what he yeah. was able to do. Do you think that he wouldn't have liked some of those players on his list? But, but, he's, in but he's gone so, as well, Sal. Yeah, that, but listen, some of the players that are available to be able to play in his team. Yeah. You think the Titans, you think the Bulldogs wouldn't like some of those players? He's not making any changes. He's trying to save his job. Milford and Croft, unfortunately, haven't gelled together post-COVID. Who do you bring in, though? That, yeah, well, that's that's Tom, that Tom Dearden's the only one on that list that you can bring in and no. say, he might be better than what we've got. Tom Dearden and Tyson Gamble. You have a running big 5'8 body. You just pull the pin and you try and... You, you literally take a gamble? You just, well, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I, I put out a tweet over a month ago and put my 17 up that I would bring in and, and the Broncos fans went, oh, we'd lose by 100, we'd lose by this. Stop worrying about the result. Let's worry about the process. Get some young guys in there. Let's see if they can handle the NRL because who's, who knows what you've got in the kit bag unless you play them. They're not playing them. They keep resting them. They keep Milford going to fullback. Is he a fullback or 5'8"? We heard last year that's his best position, but then he starts 2020 in at 5'8". He just can't make up his mind, and that's why the results are so bad. It's disheartening, and I'm sure we could talk about it for another hour, but we do not have time. Let's go to Sweet or Sour. Jamie, what is it this week? Yeah, well, Sweet or Sour, a little bit lighter this week. Uh, well, just yesterday... Penrith, I love Penrith playing out at Penrith, I haven't been at the club, but it was the handshake between Nathan Cleary and Viliama Kikau. Have a look how smooth this is. Now, obviously they're allowed to shake hands because they're in the bubble and uh, they've been obviously tested, but it is just a young man's game at the moment. There's so much flair and swag. I love the haircuts. I love everything about it. Uh, they're actually taking over at the moment. We actually prepared one ahead of doing the show. <laughs> Are we going to do oh, it? Oh, no. No, we can't. We can't touch hands. <laughs> we can't. No touching. It is COVID. <laughs> there are strict protocols, but I like the it. Young and man's I like it. positive. We yeah. are going to talk to a Penrith Panther right now. Uh, he joins us on the line. Josh Mansour, I know you weren't part of the handshake, but thanks for coming on Inside the NRL. No worries. Thanks for having me. Now, you're in a very different position. I say ladder leading. This time last year, you were at the bottom of the table. Talk to us through about uh, the different emotions now sitting at the top and, and how good it is. Oh, pretty simple. Oh, really, <laughs> last year I was just really sad. Um, it was very challenging, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but right now, currently, uh, everyone's extremely motivated, um, happy um, and, and very confident. Obviously, last year was a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of distractions involved. But um, this year, we've just come with a new mindset, fresh mindset. And, uh, you know, we just enjoyed our footy end of the day. Josh, obviously a lot of talk over the years at Penrith with these young kids. It's been there for years, but what makes you mm. confident this crop of young kids is different to the ones that haven't been able to get the job done in the past? You had your Bryce Cartwrights, your Matt Moylans. What makes this mm. group so special? 
I think uh, the way we're playing, I think it's a big indicator. I think the way we're playing, the style of fully, style of footy, sorry, um, I think could lead us to our finals push. Uh, I think the, the kids that we've got at the moment have shown a great a sense of maturity. And it comes off the back of our preseason. It's, personally, it's been one of the toughest preseasons I've ever been involved in. And um, the kids that have been, uh, the boys, I should say, that were training uh, amongst that and were, were unreal. Uh, they're so young, but they've got so much leadership skills and um, they're very vocal at training. They're not scared to say what they, um, what's on their mind. And I think that they're great qualities to have. So, um, And again, I, I feel like the, the halves, the spine especially, uh, have been really leading the way and um, the acquisition of Api Corusa has been a massive leader for us. Josh, what's it like playing out aside a young superstar in Stephen Crichton? He's, he's mm. making you look good at times, but he's making defenders look really, really silly. How's that adjustment been, having a new centre partner that's only 19? Oh, mate, he's been unreal. He's just uh, he's just one of those players where he can put if he puts his mind to any sport, he just he'll just thrive in it. He's a g- enormous athletic ability, um, and you know what? He's like you said, he's only nineteen. Like the future is so bright for him, and uh, I feel like we've really uh, built a great connection on on that left edge um, with Kicks and Jerome, and I feel like we're just going to keep on growing. Josh, you mentioned Api Corusau. How has he helped mm. transform that spine? Oh, he's been unreal. Uh, it's great to have him, firstly, at, uh, back at the club. Uh, but I think the biggest thing, he's just been uh, another voice, especially in the leadership group. Uh, he's got a lot of experience. He's obviously a premiership-winning um, hooker. And uh, all the boys really look up to him. He's just uh, he's always led, led the way up through the middle. And with um, I think with his frame being so small, he's always... Um, going hard into the big forwards. He's not, he's not scared to put, put his body on the line, and that's, that's really inspiring, um, especially amongst the group. Josh, Nathan Cleary, you're obviously very close to him over the last few years. He seems happy again, mm-hmm. mate. What's been the biggest change with Nathan Cleary that's allowed him to play the way he has? Oh, I think a collective of things, really. I think, uh, as well, with Baz coming to the club, he's really helped our attack. Um, but with also, like you said, Appy, yeah, he's just his tempo, his composure. Um, they've just been really flourishing off each other. And uh, I've got to say as well, I've got to um, wrap up Jerome Lua. He's really, really relishing off the good form of um, those two players. And um, he's really uh, had a bigger say, especially in our attack, um, down our left edge. Josh, Trent Barrett potentially goes to another club at the end of next year, interviewing for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs job. How are the players taking that at the moment? You want him to stick around? He's been amazing for your attack. Oh, mate, we wouldn't want him to leave. Yeah, no, nah. Saying that, um, it's every assistant's dream to be an NRL coach, but, um, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to stand in, stand in his way if that's his decision. But, uh, yeah, he's been unreal for us. Like I said, he's, it'll be sad to see him leave. He's really changed our attack. He's really... Um, he's, been, he's been awesome for us. He's a great fella and, uh, yeah, hopefully he can stay. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Josh, how are you finding it being the grandfather of the team? I see that you know, a bit of hair loss on top of well. wow. the grandfather of the you team. Used, you, really? used to be, you used to be the man in there. I hear that you're the grandfather of the team. What's it like? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I am feeling old. 30 years old, mate. When I first debuted at Penrith, I, I was one of the youngest, youngest in the team. So, yeah, definitely things have changed. But, um, you know, it still, is what it is. Still the best but, body, though, I hear. Oh, That's okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, you changed your tune real quick. Yeah, absolutely. That was a compliment sandwich if I've ever heard one. Wow. Don't worry, we'll get him back for you, Josh. Thanks so much for joining us today as well. Uh, Good luck on Sunday against the Gold Coast Titans. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Uh, He's a good sport. He's lucky to put up with people like you. All right, it's halfway through the NRL season, so we need to talk about season predictions. We did revisit it. um, Well, we visited it in round one. We need to revisit it now. Let's take a look at your top eight from the start and to now and some changes that were made. Okay, talk us through it. That's my top eight there on the left. Uh, Not too much has changed. I think Newcastle I had missing out. They look like they're going to be in there. Other than that, I'm pretty pretty spot on, I think. You don't have South in there anymore? Or Tigers. Yeah, so, South just keep beating themselves. You know, Wayne Bennett be so frustrated. They turn it on for seven minutes and, you know, get themselves back into a game. But I think... Um, Broncos, five. Oh, yeah. Disappointing. <laughs> I tipped Parramatta to win the spoon one. last year and now <laughs> look at them. You're Michael, welcome. And what about for you? Did you make many changes to your top eight? Look, I have no idea. One. I'll have to wait for the graphic to come up to see what I did in round one, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, if you look at my t- top eight in round one, I think I've got one wrong there so far. The Dragons is the only one, and they could sneak in, so that Rabbit very eyes. well may be. Uh, yeah, as 
Yeah, I think I think the Tigers might sneak in. They got a hard run. I still think Tom Trebojevic will get Manly into the eight. Um, yeah. So you don't think South can can make the eight? Both Not the way they're that. playing, Katie. But uh, the Manly Seagulls on the weekend with that win gave themselves enough confidence to be able to make the eight, and then Tommy to come in and for a month just tear the comp apart Did with a friendly, with a friendly surprise? draw as well. Uh, biggest surprise. Oh, biggest or? surprise is Brisbane. Okay. Yeah, not. I had him fifth. Oh, I didn't had, have him in. No, there. I had. I had. I had him getting sacked. To be honest, before the season even started, I wow. thought this would be his last year. I just didn't hear the right things out of Brisbane to suggest they were going to be a crack this year. Okay. Well, as for the 2020 NRL Telstra Premiers, you went with the Eels, Michael. You went with the Raiders, Jamie. Are you both mm. still happy with that choice? Uh, Ooh, are we picking yeah. again? Yes. Okay, I'll get another one. Yep. Uh, I'll take the Roosters. Okay. Sticking with the Eels. Pick like the, it. Like it. Oh, there's no reason to suggest they won't be close to winning the comp. The Roosters, the obvious favourites, but I think they can... The only, th- the only thing with Parramatta is they've got a couple of injuries. If Nathan Brown is out, he is such an emotional beacon for that, that mm. team. Mm. They, they lose. I know that their full pack's great, but they lose a lot with him being injured. Yeah. OK, and finally, uh, Dalian Medalist. Now, you both picked Mitchell Moses. He's going to have to make one mighty strong run home because leading the, the ladder at the moment is Harry Grant on 13 points, Mitch Moses... On six, are you still confident he could potentially come home? No, I'll pick again. Okay, fine, go. James Tedesco, back to back. Who are you going to go? Mm, I'm going to go Nathan Cleary. I knew you'd say Nathan Cleary. <laughs> I like Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Cleary. Cleary. Mate, you know Fair you're enough. allowed to cheer for teams outside the West. <laughs> I am from Western Sydney. I will stick with the West. Thank you very much. Mm. No Just worries. Just because you left Penrith to live in the Shire doesn't mean I have to betray my roots. <laughs> do, you, do you rate Nathan Cleary as the best halfback in the game? or? Uh, Thereabouts. I'm Mitchell Pearce, Nathan Cleary. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right, there's a few, but that's okay. While you two get to the smart board, we're going to talk about arguably one of the halfbacks who Jamie rates as the best halfback in the world, DCE. Now, he did speak to Fox League um, after the match. He's been showing plenty of form in his comeback, but he showed his witty side as well. What on earth is he doing? We know he's a hard taskmaster, but is he preparing a victory speech or is he... Checking the power bill, Vaughn. What is he doing? He'd be looking for money that people left in the stands as they walk out. (laughs) <laughs> uh, there's the Asla. Reminds me of someone else, actually, in this building <laughs> at the moment. Jamie, J- Daly Cherry Evans got the comedy down pat, but he's got his game in order as well. Can you talk us through this set yet, it, on the weekend where he takes his team from his own half, takes the set restart and turns it into points? Yeah, he certainly does. He plays every play. It's just a pleasure to watch when he's in this kind of mood. He was really aggressive with his defence. This is just before half-time. They need to go down and cement... Probably a field goal or at least put some pressure on. But he puts the play on here to Jake Trebojevic, pushes through on support. Now, that's the big play there. And if we pause it right here, he's got Jay Field out of position. He's got Brad Parker, you can see in that bottom corner there, already pushing up for a kick. But he has the class to be able to push forward and put on the big play. The one thing that you spoke about before was involvement, and he's involved in every play. Can you talk us through what he does in this particular motion here against the Eels? Well, he's got his eyes up, and he he knows he's got every option, but he's on the front foot, and with Jay Field out of position, he goes to the line, puts it through Brad Takarangi. Everyone is on board there, but he sets it up the play before by pushing up in support, being able to be that option, and then double down on that next play proves why he's the best halfback in the world. When he's in that kind of mood, Manly are a serious threat to this competition once they get their troops back. Well, there you have it, Katie. The best halfback in the world, according to Jamie Soward, in action. Yeah, he's, that's not the first time he said it. Thanks so much for your insight, gents. And while I get you back into your seats, it is time now to turn our attention to this week's Casualty Award, brought to you by Go Healthy Vitamins. Well, James Roberts could have played his last game for 2020. Today, the club confirming the centre ruptured his pec and will have it operated on this week with a recovery time frame of about 12 weeks. While teammate Ethan Lowe has flared up an old neck injury and will meet with a surgeon in coming days to determine the best rehab process. In positive news for the Bulldogs, Kieran Foran has been cleared of any serious damage to his toe. The club put out an update earlier today saying the half should be named to play this week. Corey Oates was cleared of a compound fracture after their loss to the Tigers, but did cop some nasty lacerations which narrowly missed his arteries and looking at around a month on the sidelines, now, if you are a Corey Oates fan, head to the Broncos website and click on the injury article. You can send him a personalised get well message. Moving on to the Eels, Mitchell Moses is likely to return in time for their clash against the Tigers on Thursday night. 
while Dylan Edwards will spend some time out for Penrith with a hamstring twinge. And the Roosters will be without Angus Crichton for hopefully no more than three weeks after he went down with an MCL injury. In more injury news, Manly are waiting on a time frame for Moses Suley after injuring his sternum, while teammate Ruben Garrick will have to pass HIA protocols if he is to play on Friday. And while the Eels look to welcome back Mitch Moses, they're still waiting results on Mike Acevo's knee and Nathan Brown's corked hip. The side hasn't trained since their loss to Manly on Saturday and won't train until tomorrow. That's all the injuries out of round 10. Thanks to Go Healthy Vitamins, it's now time for Hit or Miss. All right, the Warriors should play all of their games at home in 2021. Hit or miss, Jamie? Hit. I'll be over there. Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a coach, yeah. that's right. <laughs> maybe not a coach, maybe an assistant. Wink, wink. Uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, I think it'd be fantastic for the NRL to, to let New Zealand Warriors, after the sacrifices they've made this year away from their family, spend the whole 2021 season playing uh, their home games there, but then their away games as well, because it's just as easy, you know, to play your NRL team over there, uh, take your home game over there. Most Some clubs do it already, Katie, so I think it'd be fantastic for Peter Volandis to make that happen. Yeah, I agree. Ask 12 clubs who've got home games against the Warriors, take them all to Auckland or Wellington, Dunedin, wherever it is. Christchurch. As, as, as a thank you for their sacrifices, they get to stay home all next year. I, I like the idea and I hope clubs get behind it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea as well. OK, moving on. Uh, NRL should find players for diving, hit or miss. Michael? Ah... Uh, here, here we go, here we go, here we go. I don't mind a bit of gamesmanship and milking, but just there's there's milking and then there's just bad acting and Josh Morris, this was horrendous on the weekend. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. I'm a bit I'm a bit torn. I know you're a big NBA fan and you they get fined for tanking, diving. Bulldogs fans, it was eleven years ago before you start saying why I'm commenting on this. Uh, yeah, look. But no, I don't think they should be fined. It's, you know, you, the idea of the player is to do anything it takes to win. And if you create a little bit of doubt in the referee's mind, sometimes you get a, a result, sometimes you get, it goes against you. But, you know, Jordan Rapana, that's what the challenge is brought in for. So we don't want to see any clangers, but, you know, we, we don't want to get into the fine of, of soccer as well. Now, I know you said it's 11 years ago, but finally answer this question. That fateful night at Cogra, did you take a dive, Mr Milkman? No, I didn't. And if you can see, it's actually still a penalty because uh, Cl uh, Clint Eastwood, Greg Eastwood <laughs> uh, gets in my way as I'm turning back to chase. Now, back there, not now, but right there, I mean, I could have made up that five metres probably in half a second, not even half a second. So it's still a penalty. Uh, Bulldogs fans, I know you still haven't let it go, <laughs> but it is 11 years ago. No try, unfortunately, and I don't feel bad about it. I think you're right, Clint Eastwood. That was the type of performance you pulled off on that. Look at the Bulldogs fans. They, <laughs> they haven't forgiven you still. That's all right. Oh, hey, I've got, that's all right. I've got enough friends. Hey, but as a Dragons fan, <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Our final hit or miss, West Tigers will be looking for Ryan Madison on Thursday night. Before I get your answers, though, uh, let's take a look at how this feud unfolded over the last 12 months. The thing is, he thinks he's worth more. Yeah, he came to us as really a, a bench back rower and he had an outstanding season. That is a strong try by Ryan Madison. To me, I'm a bit old school in the fact that I think you've got to have more than one good season in the NRL before you start to demand big money. Because what happened between the club and myself, um, it had nothing to do with money, but um, that's, that's what people think and obviously that, that's, that's their opinion. Everyone's writing the words for us, but no one's come out and said, we hate Ryan Madison. That's footy. Players come and go at clubs, whether he's here or not. You know, the club stays. But he's going good over there, so good, good luck to him. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I love it. Give me the popcorn. Oh. Hit or miss. Oh. That, is, that is the best. I forgot like, the question after that. Preview. That really, I mean, <laughs> can they play three times this week? Um, I think miss. It's a professional business. But miss? I, I, You're I don't, yourself. I don't think that they'll go after him intentionally. They'll... They'll know that winning, Michael Maguire will be stressing to his team that winning is the main goal here. They're still in that clump, you know, from 6 to 12 there. You don't want to give away a game just by going out of the line and, and trying to put a, a shot. He'll, he'll have extra attention every time he carries the ball. But, you know, I think when you hear from two club greats like Robbie Farrer and Benji Marshall, you know, Benji's the one still playing, very professional. And Robbie, it's his job now to stoke the fire all week and, and, and take a bit of pressure off the players. What, what do you expect Benji to say? Yeah, we hate him. No one's going to come out and say that in the situation. I thought Robbie summed it up very well. Robbie was good. Robbie was good. I think Robbie is a closer reflection of what the general 
players feel towards Ryan Madison. Obviously, time heals all wounds and they've settled down a bit. But at the time, they were filthy that he walked out on them without an explanation. And they'll go after him. They'll go after him on the field and they'll go after him in the stands. You can be guaranteed about that. Well, the perfect... and, and so they should. But on, on the other hand, though, let me just say this. Until clubs stop getting rid of blokes, you look at Robbie Farrer a few years ago, the Tigers, they forced him out the door. They told Josh Reynolds to look elsewhere. Until they stop doing that, players are going to keep walking and good luck to them. But Ryan Madison needs to copy his medicine because he, he left them in the lurch, he walked out. And yeah. so be it. I'll tell you what, Zach Bale will be able to ask Robbie Farrow what he thinks about the Tigers <laughs> yeah, and everything tomorrow <laughs> on teams, teams, Katie. Absolutely, that tomorrow. But the one thing, I just thought you'd be able to give me the word, hit or miss, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I doubled down. I said they're going to smash him Every in the stands week. and on the field. <laughs> no. Double hit. Every I just week. need that word from you, okay? We all do. One. It was a hit. You don't need Nico for me. I, I smashed do. it. I do. <laughs> Get rid I'm of basic. Sticker. I need it, okay? I can't move on until you give me what I need, all right? Um, now, speaking of that, that's hit or miss for today. I want to hear your power rankings, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> This week's NRL Power Rankings see the Penrith Panthers go from three to number one on the Power Rankings list. They were very impressive yesterday. Weren't at their best, but found a way to still win that game against the gritty Cowboys team. And I love the way that they're winning in different styles. I think to win an NRL Premiership this year, you're going to have to have ups and downs, but every win counts. Yeah, it does, but at what price, Sally? A couple of key injuries in the back line that's going to set them back a little bit over the next month with Dylan Edwards and, and Dean Faro. But Nathan Cleary, the way he's got this team playing at the moment, yeah, they he might be able to maintain the run. He won the game through his defence yesterday and really set the tone. I think that's a really positive sign if you're thinking oh, the Penrith Panthers are going to go all the way. One of the teams that's on the slide is the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Another first half where they make all the errors and just build pressure on themselves. Newcastle were good in that first half without being great. But the Rabbitohs, week after week, keep finding a way to put themselves under pressure and they just can't keep doing it. You just don't know with South Sydney. Are they a good team? Are they a bad team? And, and the question, seeing that in the last 20 minutes from Wayne Bennett, would have been frustrating because you know what they're capable of. So they've got to bounce back and bounce back quick because the team you're about to mention next are uh, coming for them. That's exactly right. The West Tigers, outstanding at Leichhardt, 48 points to nil. I just love the way that they've adapted to Michael Maguire's coaching. You think about some of the big names that he's dropped and made changes. Next man up mentality, Harry Grant's come there and obviously changed the dynamics of their attack. But Billy Walters the other night, fantastic. Yeah, and I was critical of Michael Maguire for those changes, but every time he's made big decisions, they've bounced back. And another big one in a week's time, Josh Reynolds, Luke Brooks, Billy Walters, Benji, where do they all fit? It's going to define their season. This might be the time the Tigers break their drought and crack into the eight. Make sure you keep an eye out for the NRL Power Rankings every Monday at midday. I know you love your Dragons, but you're talking about West Tigers, OK? Don't slip up. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I think the Dragons might miss after Manly's win on the weekend. <laughs> no worries. All right. Thank you, Jamie, for that. Every Monday at midday, like you mentioned. Uh, don't forget tomorrow at 3.55, NRL teams Zach Bailey, Brett Kamali and Robbie Farrell will bring you the latest team news from round 10. As soon as the team lists drop, the trio live from 3.55. Um, before the official team list drop at 4pm. But that's us for another round, gents. I know you said you had a shout-out, but time's ticking, so make it quick. Uh, good luck tonight <laughs> to our host, Katie Brown, who's up for selection for that's the New South Wales Harvey Norman Premiership for South Sydney. <laughs> good luck tonight. We'll all be cheering you. I can't believe you threw me on the bus. I'm going to be crying if I don't good make the side. <laughs> You'll be there. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Hard. Speak to your mate, Wayne Bennett. He'll pull some strings for you. <laughs> yeah, he is my mate. Two weeks running now. Very be lucky. All right. Thanks so much. Until next Monday, have a good one. He hits it, he's yeah. got it!